Hello everybody! Today's video is going to be about Russian poetry. We are going to be talking about poems written by Russian writers of the beginning of 20th century. So hi everyone, welcome to my channel. As you could understand already, today we're going to have a video on Russian poetry. I already have a video um, that is called The Sound of Russian Language, where I'm reading in Russian to you. And today I'm going to recite poetry to you in Russian, so you would be able to hear Russian language from different, you know, different angle, from different side. Um, of course, I will be giving you translation, so you will be able to understand what I'm reading about. Uh, for today's video, I've chosen three poems of uh, three different poetry writers, and I can say that the poems I've chosen, uh, they are really very popular in Russia. Almost everybody else knows them because they are included into uh, Russia's school program for literature in high school. So many people even know them by heart. Um, those poems are uh, written by poetry writers who lived in the beginning of 20th century. Uh, and here I should say, like before reading the poems, I should say that these were the times uh, of uh, great changes that took place in my country. It was the time of, you know, after the First World War, it was a time after the uh, Russian Revolution. Uh, so, uh, practically speaking, new country was being formed, you know, Russia changed drastically um, and uh, it was a time of economical crisis and at the same time it was a time of turmoil inside the country. Uh, country was split into groups, like there were people who supported revolution, there were people who were against it, there were uh, great numbers of people who immigrated from Russia because they um, they can take this new reality. <laughs> they were against revolution and they, uh, some of them feared for their lives. So they practically had to start their lives from zero in other countries. Um, so the situation was difficult. And of course, all of this was reflected in poetry, as you can understand. So, the first poem that I'm going to read to you today was written by Alexander Bloch and it shows people's feelings, people's fears and their hopes for a better life for themselves and for those of their friends and relatives who left Russia. So, okay, let's hear the first one. Девочка пела в церковном хоре, а всех усталых в чужом краю. О всех кораблях, ушедших в море, О всех забывших радость свою. Так пел ее голос, летящий в купол, И луч сиял на белом плече, И каждый из мрака стоял и слушал, Как белое платье пело в луче. И всем казалось, что счастье будет, Что в тихой заводе все корабли, Что на чужбине усталые люди Светлую жизнь себе обрели. И голос был сладок, и луч был тонок, И только высоко у царских врат Причастный тайным плакал ребенок О том, что никто не придет назад. The second poem that I've chosen is written by Сергей Есенин. And um, here I should say that though he was a person from a village family, from a family of peasants, he, like no other Russian writer was able to express his love towards his country and <clears throat> to describe the beauty of Russian nature like no other poet. For me personally, I think this way. And I love his poems a lot. I think that he's very delicate and very, very, um, um, very unique in a way. So today's poem is going to be about his uh, thinking of his life, of his work, of um, the results of his life's devotion, you know, dedication to poetry. Um, so, hear it. Отговорила роща золотая березовым веселым языком, и журавли печально пролетая 
уж не жалеют больше ни о ком. Кого жалеть? Ведь каждый в мире странник пройдет, зайдет и вновь покинет дом. А всех ушедших грезит конопляник широким месяцем над голубым прудом. Стою один среди равнины голой, и журавлей уносит ветром вдаль. Я полон дум о юности веселой, но ничего в прошедшем мне не жаль. Не жаль мне лет, растраченных напрасно, не жаль души сиреневую цвете. В саду горит костер рябины красный, но никого не может он согреть. Не обгорят рябиновые кисти, от желтизны не опадет трава. Как дерево роняет тихо листья, так я роняю грустные слова. И если время ветром разметая, сгребет их всех в один ненужный ком, скажите так, что роща золотая отговорила милым. The third poem that I chose was written by Vladimir Mayakovsky. Now, here I should say that he himself was, uh, that he had an image of a very blunt, very rough, uh, very um, straight speaking person. And whenever he was reading his poems, he looked very fierce. And each word that he said was like a thrown stone. You know, they were very sudden, very, uh, very rough. Yeah, that, I guess that's the word that described him best. And here I should say that if you would compare all Russian poetry writers to music, uh, then uh, the poetry writers of 19th century would sound like classical music. Uh, other poetry writers who came after them, like the poetry writers of the beginning of 20th century, uh, sound like pop music, but Vladimir Mayakovsky, he is like a rock star here, you know, his poetry sounds like rock music. Um, no tenderness here, no tender feelings. All the emotions are at the extreme, you know, they're blunt, they're rough. And if he's suffering, is it just like a cry of pain? So I guess that's a very good comparison here. Um, but the poem that I've chosen actually stands out from all the rest of his poems. It kind of shows him from different angle, from different side. It shows that he had a very soft side as well, like very, um, very tender side of him as well. So though he claimed himself to be, um, he actually claimed himself to be a non-religious person. He supported the idea that religion was for uh, for uneducated people and that if you are modern, if you are educated, uh, you shouldn't believe in any religion. That was his idea. But the thing is that I think deep in his heart, he suspected that God existed. He had doubts about his ideas. Uh, after hearing this poem, you would definitely support me and definitely <laughs> say that a person who don't believe in God cannot write such things. So, okay, let's hear this one. Послушайте, ведь если звезды зажигают, значит, это кому-нибудь нужно? Значит, кто-то хочет, чтобы они были? Значит, кто-то называет эти плевочки жемчужиной? И, надрываясь, метели в полуденной пыли, Вырывается к Богу, боится, что опоздал, Плачет, целует ему жилистую руку, Просит, чтобы обязательно была звезда, Клянется, не перенесет эту беззвездную муку, А после ходит тревожный, но спокойный наружно, Говорит кому-то, ведь теперь тебе ничего, не страшно, да? Послушайте, ведь если звезды зажигают, значит, это кому-нибудь нужно. Значит, это необходимо, чтобы каждую ночь над крышами зажигалась хотя бы одна звезда. So, everyone, these were three poems I've chosen for you today. I hope you liked it. I did my best, you know, while reciting them to you. I do feel a little bit shy, you know, a little bit confused because usually I don't go around reciting poems, you know. <laughs> like I think last time I did it was in school, when I was in high school. 
that I said a poem in front of everyone by heart. <laughs> um, well, nevertheless, don't forget to leave your comments below. Uh, write down like what do you think about Russian poetry? What do you think about such videos? Where and when I'm you know when I'm reading something in Russian to you or like saying something in Russian to you? Is it interesting for you or not? Um, maybe I should make a video on Russian phrases or like Russian pronunciation and stuff. Um, as for now, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really need your support to get my first thousand of subscribers. I know that isn't much, but for me, this is already something. So, okay. Have a good day. Bye.